Yeah, so I just wanted to say a very quick welcome. The, the, the webinar today is going to focus on the Belfast Million Trees project. Um, so it's something we've been working on for the last two years. Belfast City Council um, is privileged, I would say, to be in the position to coordinate this project. And it's a real, it's a true partnership uh, at the, across the city. Um, before, when we were planning this webinar, you know, one of my colleagues, Alan, who's on the call, talked about the team spirit. And it's something we really wanted to, to convey today in the webinar. Um, so you're going to hear from a few of the few of our partners and then the, the focus uh, we're launching the Belfast I3 Eco Report today. So at about 11 o'clock, uh, Danielle and Hannah will join us from from uh, Forest Research and Tree Economics to talk about that report. Um, so in terms of the, the Belfast Million Trees, it's been a real catalyst for action in terms of tree planting and looking at the, the infrastructure across the city. We haven't we haven't approached it simply as a tree planting program. Um, it's linked into uh, some of the major strategies for the city. So Belfast Resilience Strategy, which is looking at all the, the shocks and stresses that affect the city. Uh, and then the uh, Belfast Agenda, which is the, the community plan for Belfast. And then also as our climate plans are being developed, um, this Million Trees Initiative is linking into all those strategies. Uh, the, 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 the section of Belfast City Council where I work is the Climate and Resilience Unit. And um, so we see this really as a, an important uh, a sort of key, a key flagship project in our work to address climate change in Belfast and also to address the, the resilience of the city. Uh, so we have targets to be net zero by 66% um, by 2025 and 80% by 2030 and 100% by 2050. So as well as all the work we do to reduce, reduce emissions and decarbonize, um, this initiative and others are, are really important in terms of, of how we work with nature and how we support nature. Um, there's a whole range of benefits uh, in this initiative. So it's something that we really, um, it cuts across a, a whole range of strategies and it's a very exciting initiative for the city. So we just want that to come across to you today. Um, so, okay. You're gonna hear from Peter Deal, who is from Belfast Metropolitan Residence Group, who, where, which is where the idea came from. And then Gregor Fulton from the Woodland Trust, um, Alan Mahaffey from Belfast City Council and Lisa Critchley from Belfast Hills Partnership. And those are some of our key partners in, in Belfast. And then at 11 o'clock, you'll hear from Danielle Hill from Tree Economics and Hannah Walker from Forest Research, and also from John Morris, who led on the surveys as part of the i 3 Eco Report. And we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions after the initial million tree speakers, and then again after the i 3 Eco Report. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or, or put your hand up and we'll try and come back to you. So if I can, I'll stop sharing at this stage and I shall bring Peter Dale in, who's sitting beside me here in the room. Uh, Peter's from Belfast Metropolitan Residence Group, um, but he's also formerly the uh, Chief Landscape Architect for the Department of the Environment in, Nor in Northern Ireland. So Peter, you're very welcome. If you could say a few words maybe about the background of Million Trees and where it came from. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation, Richard. I'm uh, very pleased to be here and I'm honoured because uh, it's uh, at the end of my career and possibly the end of my existence. That's <laughs> such a fantastic uh, um, thing has happened because the million trees thing is undoubtedly one of the highlights of my professional doing. So I am thrilled to bits to use very plain English. Uh, the million trees uh, um, idea uh, has been converted into reality. And apart from Belfast City Council who are um, taking the lead on this whole thing, I think we, and I would not like to forget to mention the fantastic amount of work which has been done by, I call them collectively, the planters. And the planters have been doing a fantastic job, not only sourcing the plants, but organizing the uh, quite elaborate P2 uh, plant trees now in the second planting season. And I hope it's only another 13 more planting seasons to go. Uh, whether I am still around here, I don't know, but may maybe, maybe I'm lucky. But anyway, um, thank you very much for um, putting in so much work and taking this whole thing on. It was maybe seen as a little sort of ankle uh, uh, weight, but I think the millstone sort of thing is becoming a big, big bigger and uh, there's a lot of work still ahead of us. And anything that helps is great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Peter. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so Peter mentions this, we're, we're in year two of the, it's a 15 year project, so we're in, we're in this for the long haul. And the, the reason why we've gone for 15 years is to link it with the, the Belfast community plan, the Belfast agenda. So it's a lot, it's a long term strategy that we have and a long term initiative. Um, at this stage, I shall bring uh, Gregor Fulton in from uh, the Woodland Trust. Gregor, if you want to take over. 
Yep, thanks, Richard. And I'll just give us share my screen here. Um, hopefully, everybody can see that okay. Uh, is that going to slide you okay? Yes, it has, Gregor. That's it. That's great, thanks. So, so really, um, just a, uh, four or five minutes just to talk about uh, the Woodland Trust's role um, and uh, why we wanted to be involved. And one of the main reasons is the uh, trees form or act as a fantastic resource uh, in terms of natural climate solution. As you all know, there's only about 8% tree cover in Northern Ireland uh, compared to the European average of 36, 37%. And uh, we really need to be getting our tree cover in Northern Ireland up to about 16 or 18%. And to do that, we need to work in partnership. And uh, the Belfast Million Trees um, uh, with Belfast City Council is, is one of those partnerships that we were really keen to get involved with. Um, and the trees, uh, I'll be talking, I'll be showing a few slides of projects and with other councils that we're working with um, in terms of the reasons why. And I suppose the main reasons are, are carbon sequestration, flood alleviation, uh, air pollution, and, uh, and also the benefits that trees bring in terms of for people and health and well-being. Um, so in terms of the Woodland Trust, uh, just a quick uh, up, wee, wee bit about what we do, who we are. Um, so the Woodland Trust is the UK's largest woodland conservation charity. And we're about creating new woodland, uh, protecting what's there already. This is our precious ancient woodlands, which we only have 0.04% cover of ancient woodland in Northern Ireland. And then also inspiring people to visit woods um, so that they can enjoy them. And uh, it's, it's so important for their health and well-being. So how we make it happen is, uh, is mainly, um, we're quite a small team in Northern Ireland, um, but we have very strong partnerships and, and that's the best way that we get things done. And the One Million Trees for Belfast is a prime example of that. Um, we're, uh, we've, we're working with them on the Emergency Tree Fund, some funding that the Woodland Trust brought in to help uh, the council. Um, it's like an enabling fund to help them deliver on their, their tree plans. Um, Richard might be talking about that a wee bit later on. And unlocking, we also unlock income for landowners through grants um, and make it as easy as possible for landowners to plant. And that can be through leases or management agreements. Um, and then also just maximizing on the grants. So if, if we can add to existing forest service grants to make, make projects even bigger and better, that, that's what we'll do. So I was just going to talk about a couple of case studies. Um, I'm not going to focus too much on Belfast because uh, Lisa Critchley will be talking about the projects going on in Belfast, as will Richard whenever he gives his update. But in terms of uh, projects that we've done and partnerships working, um, Ockram Hill is one of the one of our recent recent ones where we've planted 50 hectares of new woodland. We worked with uh, Newry Moran and Down District Council on a 20 year lease. Um, and this site with the 130,000 trees will hopefully be sequestering about 17,000 tonnes of carbon. Um, again, I'm just going to run through these quickly to give you examples of how, how partnership work and can enable big projects and uh, substantial projects to come about. The one that's most of interest Belfast is Glass and Braddenwood, a 98 hectare site which we acquired um, two years ago now, just, just behind Cave Hill on Colin Ward. Uh, part of it does fall within the Belfast City Council area. Um, and again, this one we're, we're, plant, we're going to be planting in, in the region of 150,000 trees and the potential of sequestering about 24,000 tonnes of carbon. This one's also fantastic in terms of there's, there's three main watercourses that come off this, including, including Glasner Braben. And uh, in terms of flood alleviation further on down where, the, where these watercourses go uh, through built, built up areas. Billy Neil Country Park was one that we worked with Lisburn and Castlereagh City Council. Again, a 20 year lease. Uh, we, we got Forest Service grants for this. Um, they're retaining the access and, and the people side of things. We're looking after the trees. And again, in terms of it's a 10 hectare site with about 4,000 tonnes of carbon sequestered. An older project that we worked on started in 2013 was with uh, Knockbracken Healthcare Park with the Belfast Health Trust. Um, 17 hectares of woodland were created around all of the buildings. I don't know if everybody's familiar with the Knockbracken, but there's, there's a lot of uh, buildings. It's like a mini, mini uh, town. Um, and that planting's all been incorporated into that. Uh, 
So there are patients, people who are visiting for the day can now enjoy that. So they can actually walk through the woodlands and um, plant, uh, enjoy their time there whenever they have a break. And again, just in terms of, uh, I've just stuck with the carbon figures. There's nearly 7,000 tons of carbon sequestered through that project. So it's really just to give you an overview of what can be achieved. Um, and we are looking at sites with Belfast City Council in partnership with uh, Belfast Hills Partnership. Um, so the next time we meet, we may be able to give you an update of what those are. But uh, in summary, just the trees are one of the most cost effective ways of mitigating against climate change. Um, and hopefully those slides are showing you how we can work flexibly with partners to get things uh, happening. Um, and uh, just in terms of uh, the uh, going forward, there's, there's plenty going to be happening through the, the, the Council's tree strategy, the, uh, the results that have come out of the iTree project, and also the Emergency Tree Fund, um, which uh, we're a year into now. And again, Richard will probably be updating you on that later, so I won't, uh, I won't take time on it now. But that's pretty much it for me, Richard. I hope we're stuck within <laughs> the five minutes. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you, Gregor. Um... If you want to come out, then I'll hand over to Spade Sp Sp Allen Mahaffey from Belfast City Council. Alan, if you want to come in. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, can you see the slides? Hopefully, you can't see them. Um, I just want to sort of link in a wee bit about uh, what we're doing here with section of the council uh, with the one million trees and also want to sort of talk briefly about the um, Belfast tree strategy. Alan, can't see your slides just yet. Um, well, can you not? Big no, no. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Sorry. Is that okay now? See it now? No, not yet, no. Nope. Hold on. Okay. I don't know what's going on there. No, okay. Look, I'll do. I'll do without. If you can see me, that'll do. Then. Right, no problem. <laughs> I'll talk about the slides. Um, let me see. Okay. Right. Well, just I want to just uh, you know touch base with you again. Uh, for those who uh, who joined us last year, we talked a lot about what we're doing with uh, the, the the tree program, the street tree planting, and so on. Um, we're a wee bit excited uh, this time around because Belfast has never um, had a tree strategy before. Um, and this is something we're really excited about. We're going to work towards uh, a tree strategy for uh, the city of Belfast, uh, which will include a big part of the One Million Tree uh, Programme. Um, we've been uh, very fortunate to uh, have Tree Economics in with us to help us with this, which is fantastic. Uh, they've also been involved with the iTree project for the council. Um, and on the strategy fast, we're actually uh, we're going to have a vision, a delivery plan, the strategy is going to run for 10 years with a three-year uh, action plan, uh, which uh, will help us deliver over that period of time. Um, part of the actual uh, key priorities of the strategy, the Belfast uh, Tree Strategy, is going to be the One Million Trees program, which is a big, big part of this. We're going to link into the Belfast Local Development Plan. We're going to look at the Belfast Agenda, uh, climate change, resilience, all that Richard deals with. Blue Green Infrastructure and the Belfast Local Development Plan. We're also going to look at uh, part of that, we're going to also include hedges as well. But in terms of the actual, uh, we talked last year with uh, the presentation I was uh, giving was all about collaboration. Um, and part of the actual uh, tree strategy, we have our own internal working group. Uh, and that would be made up of the likes of project on officer, biodiversity officer, planning officer who deals with trees and landscape park managers as well communications officer we'll have richard involved as well as well as outreach officers so all this is so important for us to get the delivery of our tree strategy and this links us into the one million trees um, over the past uh, two seasons now we've planted quite a few trees within uh, our own sites uh, and also within sites owned by the highways authority who we have a, a link with um, so we've, uh, this year alone, we've planted several thousand trees in our own uh, land with 300 very large trees planted as well. So uh, the smaller trees would be a mixture of uh, predominantly native trees, and then the bigger trees would be more ornamental trees. Uh, part of that, we've engaged with a lot of schools and um, 
youth groups and organisations, which has been great success. In fact, we also uh, had uh, the Queen's Green Canopy tree planting event where we had 500 trees that went towards the tree count of the 1 million trees, where we had uh, our Lord Mayor um, and we had uh, Lady Mary Peters, for those who know her, and uh, lots of schools and community groups. It was a great success. And for me personally, just to, 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 to get involved uh, in tree planting with young people, especially, it's a joy. And this One Million Tree uh, Planting campaign delivers in that. And we're really, really delighted to be part of that. Uh, and and as, the, as the numbers we plant year on year grow, it, it, you know, we're going to achieve this One Million Tree, which we're really, really are excited about. Collaboration is really, really important for us. Um, and, uh, you know, just even uh, on Thursday there, we we'll have event out of season one, but a lot of the guys that we plant the trees with, the, one of the fellas has just retired. Um, every one of those guys that attended are part of this One Million Trees through one way or another, um, which has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and the collaboration we have within this working group within the One Million Trees, we've got the Woodland Trust, the Belfast Hills Partnership, the Department for Infrastructure, who's a road service, Queen's University, the Conservation Volunteers, DERA, the Forest Service, and the Northern Ireland Housing Service. That's just to mention just a few. And these same groups are the same individuals and groups that are working with us on the tree strategy. So you can see the natural uh, linkages between the tree strategy we're going to deliver for the end of the year and the one million trees. And we're really, really excited about that. Um, and we're hoping that this tree strategy that we deliver will set uh, in place our vision and our future for tree planting. And not just tree planting, but also tree maintenance. From a practitioner's point of view, to have proper maintenance set in place so these trees grow and develop and give us what we need for the years to come. So I'm sorry it's short and sweet, but one thing I will say, hopefully uh, all being well next year, we hope to give a bit of a tree trail around the city as part of the Urban Tree Festival. Uh, and we'll also be able to update you on the tree uh, strategy that we hope we'll deliver by that stage. So thanks very much. I'll have it back to you, Richard. Thank you, Alan. <clears throat> Um, I should say that if, if anybody, Alan did a really good webinar last year as part of the Urban Tree Festival. So if anybody, if you're looking for more information about Belfast trees, I would recommend that you have a look at that. Um, and as Alan says, we're, we're going to try and do something bigger and, and maybe even a video around Belfast trees for, for next year's festival. So uh, if I could bring in Lisa at this stage from Belfast Hills Partnership. Okay, can everyone see that okay? Yeah, um, so I'm Lisa, I work for the Belfast Hills Partnership. Um, I'm their woodland officer um, and I'm also a delivery partner of Million Trees um, project with Belfast City Council. So I'm just gonna chat to you a wee bit today about um, what my role is. Uh, there's a lot more that I can talk about, but due to time constraints, I'll focus on just a couple of things. So um, I'm going to talk about what I bring to the role with my expertise and also with um, project delivery. Uh, so expertise wise, I've worked in the sector for almost 10 years, so I do have a lot of knowledge to offer the, the project. Um, this would include doing site surveys. So when a site comes to us or we find a site, we have to go out and survey the site first, see if it's suitable for planting. Um, so I would go out and have a look at site and then work out a site plan. And um, so that means what tree species are appropriate, where and how many. So uh, the picture there shows Kulstra Fierster, which is one of the schools that we planted in this year. Um, and all the yellow depicts where we planted trees. Um, and this is one part of the site plan that I wrote for that site and also working out who plants. So some of it's contractor work, some of it is community groups and pupils and that kind of thing. Um, which leads me nicely into my other uh, part of expertise because I've been in the sector for so long and in various roles, um, like as outreach roles and volunteer manager, I have quite a lot of links with schools um, and also community groups. Um, and this means that we're not coming in cold if we approach a site um, or a school or whatever to plant trees in. It means that it's a bit easier to get in with that group or the school uh, just because of my contacts with them. And it means we can kind of muster the troops to, to get more trees planted as well. Uh, so another part of this is my project delivery. 
um, that comes from all the site plans. So amongst other work that I do uh, that's not with Million Trees, I've delivered 16 projects in the Belfast City Council area, which contributes to the Million Trees project. Um, this has been with private landowners on council ground, on school grounds and community grounds. Um, in the planting season that's just gone, so 2021 to 2022 uh, winter, I've, as part of these projects, put in 7,800 trees just over that. This includes hedgerows, um, on school grounds and woodland creation. Um, and this means that 415 people have been actively engaged just through my projects contributing to Million Trees. Uh, that means that actually 415 people helped me put these trees in the ground. Uh, and it's it's always been brilliant. So you can see there just a, a few of the shots of these lovely people that have come out to help us. So project and focus, um, just to give you a bit more of an idea, Spring Hill Primary School. Um, the principal approached us, was interested in putting trees in the ground on their school uh, grounds. As you can see, it's mainly grass and tarmac on their school grounds from these pictures. So she wanted to increase biodiversity. She wanted to educate her students. She wanted to screen off a classroom area. You can see the left hand picture is the kids putting in a hedge to screen off that wee bit. Um, and also extend the natural habitat down from Black Mountain. Um, you can see in the right hand picture that uh, that's in the background and it's coming right down to the school. So 52 pupils put in 380 trees all by themselves. No adults planted the trees, they all did it themselves, brilliant. Um, and this quote here I put in because I thought it kind of sums up the Million Trees project. Um, and it's by the teacher of the P6s and their whole class. And it says, we love looking up and seeing all the newly planted trees and thinking about how lovely our playground will look and how much we have helped the local environment. And that just goes to show the Million Trees project. Um, it's about the trees, but it's also about the people and how much they enjoy uh, helping out and also seeing them. So to summarize, um, partnerships really mean progress. Uh, without my role, less would be in the ground for the Million Trees. You know, the Million Trees uh, team is only so big, there's only so much they can do by themselves. So it's really, really important to have all these partnerships, the likes of me, the Woodland Trust, TCB, all the other ones that have been mentioned before. Um, so yeah, that is me. Thanks very much. How do I do this? <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll come back and then do a quick update and then we'll, we'll hand over to, to Hannah and Danny at 11 o'clock. Um, so, hopefully you can see this. Okay. Okay, okay so just, just by way of a quick update on the Million Trees project itself. <clears throat> I think that point that Lisa makes is really critical because, like she says, Belfast City Council <clears throat> agreed to take on the coordination and the administration of the project, but uh, we, we wouldn't be able to deliver this project without the, the help and expertise of our partners. Um, and one of, the, one of the first things that we did was set up a delivery team, uh, which meets roughly every two weeks. <clears throat> and it basically means that we have a, we have a citywide group, uh, citywide structure, which meets twice a year, which is a lot of the public sector um, organizations and community and voluntary sector organizations which guide and steer the project. Um, but we have a delivery team which meets once a fortnight, uh, which is reviewing sites and reviewing the plant in progress and then advising on some of the work that we're doing to put the infrastructure in place. So we're just coming into year three of a 15 year project. <clears throat> and I'm very conscious as well that this, the Million Trees is a really interesting and exciting initiative, but it's only one initiative in a, in a sort of long line, a lineage of tree planting in Belfast. Um, so I'm very conscious of that. And uh, there have been initiatives in the past, like the Belfast Forest, and I'm sure there will be more in the future. Um, but so we really see ourselves as part of a part of a long line of, of tree planting initiatives in the city. Um, but the Million Trees uh, concept has really captured the imagination. And one of the, one of the key things for us is, is giving people an opportunity to get involved so people can feel like they're making a contribution to, to addressing climate change and, and some of these other big issues that face the city. Uh, we've spent the first couple of years laying the foundations. So we put all the structures in place. We spent a long time, <clears throat> once Belfast Metropolitan Medicine Group came to us with the idea, we spent a long time talking to the partners, uh, putting the structures and processes in place. Quite early on, we commissioned the, the, the I3 Eco Report. 
which you're going to hear about today. Um, and we also part from the Belfast Tree Strategy. Um, we've established a pilot tree nursery on Belfast City Council land. And we're also looking at the potential for a, for a larger tree nursery um, within the city. Uh, and that's a really important one because we're trying, we're, one of the principles is that we plant native trees uh, through our project. And we want, to, we want to have as many local resource trees as possible. <clears throat> Um, because there have been issues in, in the supply chain over the last year or two. So <clears throat> we're hoping that will help us uh, going forward. I should say as well that we've been funded through external funding uh, from the Emergency Tree Fund from the Woodland Trust. So that in terms of the funding and resources for this project, uh, it's primarily been from Belfast City Council and from the Woodland Trust Emergency Tree Fund. And then we've had some, some private sector sponsorship has started to come in as well. Um, <clears throat> we've planted 54 thousand native trees to date in the first couple of years. Um, and one of the big one of the big initiatives which I which I am quite excited about is the schools program, which Lisa talked about. Um, so initially we were talking we were talking to four four schools in Belfast and we've we've done uh, planting plans and started planting those schools. Uh, but we've done a call out through our partners in the education authority and another 30 schools have come forward to express an interest in being part of the program. So you, you can imagine that's an opportunity for young people uh, and parents and families to be involved in the program. So it's really it's a really exciting time for that piece of work. Um, we have we've got emer engagement funding, which will support our work with businesses, the schools, and members of the public. Um, I would say that's been one of the big challenges, as Lisa said. There's a there's a limited capacity within our team. Um, so we're going to we're going to fund the service, which will actually direct, directly uh, manage the the community engagement. Um, on the volunteer side of things. There's a steady flow of people contacting Belfast City Council wanting to be involved in volunteering and wanting to be involved in, in sponsorship and so on. So um, it's that, that's something which we see as a really big opportunity for the, for the project. Uh, we have done some work around business engagement and private sector sponsorship. Um, that, I think that over the next year, so we're going to do a bit more work around that and put a bit of process around that. Um, uh, we've been working with uh, to try to use digital platforms. So you'll you'll see an image coming up from the Belfast City Council USA platform, which is a, a, a an engagement and consultation platform that we've used. We've got about a million trees page on there, so where we can put up post updates and also um, have questions and answers and focus groups and so on. And we've also done a bit of work with a, an organisation called the Storify, which is like a crowdfunding platform. So we're, we're, we're seeing what opportunities there are to labor in some, some additional money through, through those kind of processes. Uh, we've had a contract with the conservation volunteers over the last couple of years for the supply of native trees. Um, and as I said, at the start, you know, we're, we're, we're linking into the Belfast resilience strategy and some of the emerging Belfast climate plans. Um, and the, as I say, trees are, are a real key component of how we address the, the, the climate challenges for the city going forward. I wanted to quickly mention um, the, the, what we're going to launch hopefully in the next few weeks is a, a tree count for Belfast. So it'll be a chance for residents who are planting trees and businesses who are planting trees to, to share their, their tree planting numbers with us. Um, because we're very conscious at the moment that we're, we're collecting information from partners, primarily about the numbers of trees that have been planted and the ones that are done through our project. But really we want to, we want to capture all the tree planting across Belfast because everybody who plants a tree is making a contribution to this project and to our target. Uh, and similarly, we're going to launch a land call. So anybody who owns land across the city, we want them to put forward their sites for consideration. So it'll, there'll be an assessment process um, of that land um, and we'll advise about tree planting on that land. So one of the big challenges for us is what we're working in an urban setting, obviously being in the city. So there are um, competing priorities when it comes to land use. <clears throat> Um, and tend to find that the, the, the agricultural land or the, the, the free land is, is on the fringes of the city. And then the closer you come into the, to the city centre and the city core, it becomes much more challenging and difficult to find land and find space. But one of the challenges that Belfast Metropolitan Residence Group put to us was to get into neighbourhoods and to engage people and communities in this process and really to give, to give ownership to communities. So that is something that we really want to focus on going forward. Um, you can see at the bottom of the screen there just some of the targets that we've set through the project. So um, we're, we're, we're on target for, for our numbers of planting at the moment. I've tried to break that, that million trees down over the, over the course of the next uh, 15 years. So as you can see, we're starting smaller and then building towards uh, large numbers around the middle of the project. And the reason for that is that we're, we're taking some time now at the start to sort of put the infrastructure in place. 
the A-Tree Eco Report is part of the evidence base for us and then the Belfast Tree Strategy, which Alan's leading on, is a really key piece of work um, in terms of land use across the city uh, and what, what trees we should be planting and so on. So you can see the targets there. We're, we're in, we've just come out of year two planting season, so we've got, we're sitting at about 54,000 um, trees at the moment. Uh, we're still in the process of compiling the final numbers for this year's planting season, so uh, there's, a, there's a provisional figure in there. Um, and we're hoping to give, provide updates on an annual basis on the, on the numbers, but also on all the other uh, work strands of the project, because the, the numbers is only one part of the project. And I really, I see part the collaboration and the, the infrastructure being a really important part. And um, tree management is equally as important as, as tree planting. So we need to think about how we, how we look after the trees that exist in the city right now, um, as well as the, the new tree, trees that we plant. Okay, so... There's a couple of photographs there from tree giveaway events that we've done recently um, in Ormo Park and Waterworks Park. So it's just another opportunity for people to get involved in the project. And then I mentioned the Your Site platform. So there's a one of, one of the features in there is, is a, a map of Belfast, which members of the public can go in and pin uh, locations that they would like trees to be planted. So that it, it basically helps inform our, our thinking about where trees could go to. Um, so I say, we're trying to use those kind of platforms as much as possible. Okay, so I think that's me for the update from the project. We will come back. Uh, we don't have time at the moment, I think, for questions and answers, but we will come back to that towards the end of the session. Um, so if you have anything, please hold those questions. Um, and at this stage, I shall hand over to uh, Danny and Hannah. Thanks very much, Richard. I'll just share my screen. Um, how is that looking? Can people? It looks great, Anna. Yeah, it's come out perfectly. That's excellent. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, you can see my mouse cursor zooming around. Excellent. Uh, thanks very much for this opportunity, uh, Richard and team, to talk about the I3 Eco project in Belfast. Um, yeah, this is this I3 Eco project is part of the Belfast One Million Trees program, so it's funded through that. Um, uh, by the Woodland Trust and other funders, as Richard mentioned, and tree economics and forest research, two organisations are tasked with delivering this project. So uh, Danny is here from tree economics and I'm here from forest research to launch the results really and, and tell you a little bit about it. And the full results are available uh, in the report, which is currently on the tree economics website for everybody to read. So uh, thank you for having us. And thank you for listening. This was the first I treat eco project in Northern Ireland, which is brilliant. Um, and I think in the whole of the Isle of Ireland as well, uh, which is really exciting. So that's the introduction. Um, I'll tell you a bit about what is I treat eco. So I treat is a state of the art peer reviewed software suite. So it's a group of uh, tools. Um, delivered by the US Department of Agriculture Forest Service. And that is a collaboration of groups um, in the US who've come together and decided to make these uh, tree tools available for everybody to use free of charge. iTree Eco, which is the tool that we've used to do this project, is one of the core tools. And it's designed for measuring and understanding urban forests. I think some of you will know what urban forests are, but in case some of you don't, I'll come on in a couple of slides to exactly what that means. So I treat eco, this tool is a collection of linked mathematical models. So it's computer based models that take measured tree data and calculate the function of trees and then from those functions, such as photosynthesis, we can estimate what benefits they provide to us. And this um, tool has been used by all sorts of people. So local authorities, community groups, charities, tree wardens, um, property developers, government bodies, highways, authorities, universities, academics, research organizations, all sorts of people all around the world um, use iTree Eco. So here's um, a slide about what the urban forest is. So the urban forest is all of the trees in the urban realm and that includes public and private spaces along linear routes and waterways and in amenity areas. 
and it contributes to this wider concept of green infrastructure within our towns and cities and it's part of the wider urban ecosystem. So this outer circle represents all green infrastructure within a city and then part of that is the urban forest and that's trees that exist anywhere within an urban area. Here's a slide, I um, apologise, it's so busy about how ITRI Eco works. I'll try and uh, make this as clear as possible. So to reiterate, it's a collection of mathematical or computer models that take in data and output estimates of benefits. So we start with field data. We go into the field and we measure um, the trees that we're interested in. And we take account of the species, the stem diameter, the height, the condition that the leaves and the branches are in, what land use the tree is in, ground cover, and all sorts. Uh, we, I, could, I could fill this slide with the, with the field data that we record. Um, that feeds into the model, and the model estimates the structure and composition of the entire urban forest, so it extrapolates our sample data to the whole of the area of the um, town or city that we're interested in, and it'll tell us how many trees there are in that town or city, how their sizes are distributed, what species there are, things like that. And once it knows the structure and the composition of the trees in that area, the model then estimates the growth rate, photosynthesis, respiration, transpiration, and so on, all of these biological functions of trees. And those biological functions are what deliver um, what are known as ecosystem services, which are of benefit to people. And those services include how much carbon the tree absorbs as it grows, how much oxygen it produces and how much air pollution it absorbs. And each of these services, um, we can put a monetary value on because the UK government has agreed ways of doing that. So for example, um, what is the value of carbon storage to people? So at the moment we value carbon at around 248 pounds per tonne of CO2 equivalent, which is a <clears throat> agreed way of valuing um, uptake or storage of carbon. So once we have all this information, we collate it into a report and that feeds through into change, decision-making, planning, funding and budgets as, as Richard was uh, referring to just before. We hope that the, uh, the results in this report will help Belfast decide what to plant and where and how best to plan their expanding urban forest. I'll just say a little bit about ecosystem services. So ecosystem services are benefits people obtain from an ecosystem. And an ecosystem is a complex of plant, animal and microorganism communities within um, living and non-living environments that act as a functional unit. So it's a collection of lives and processes and systems um, that are all knitted together in an ecological system. And some examples of the services that humans get from ecosystems are air pollution removal. So trees can absorb gases and particles through their leaves and their bark. Avoided runoff. So this is um, surface flooding in towns and cities, which is prevented by the presence of vegetation. Carbon storage, uh, which this model estimates as 0.5 of the whole tree biomass above and below ground. So that's all the carbon stored in the woody parts of a tree. And then another example is carbon sequestration. And that's the mass of carbon absorbed every year by a tree. And that's uh, calculated based on estimated growth rates of the tree. There are loads more ecosystem services that trees provide. So these are just a, a few examples. Um, I've included uh, the slide on why you would undertake an ITRI eco study to highlight some of the advantages of, of doing that. And this um, sort of cycle in the middle indicates that all of these um, reasons are interlinked. So um, as Richard said, uh, planning and design and cl climate adaptation within a city uh, are interlinked because one is gonna influence the other. So um, a question that you might ask is what do we already have in our urban forest? So knowing the composition and structure of your existing trees can help you make decisions about what to plant and where. Um, protection is another reason. So Sheffield, the uh, trees in Sheffield City were a really good example of this. And demonstrating what trees can provide and how important they are 
can encourage public support and help community groups retrain, retain trees that are threatened by development. Related to that is valuation. So if you put a monetary value on the trees that you've got, um, it makes them easy to compare to other uses of a space, such as um, new buildings or other in types of infrastructure. Um, and an economic value in terms of pounds also enables a cost benefit analysis so you can see um, that your trees are actually delivering you monetary benefits rather than being a cost to you. And it gives stakeholders um, leverage to secure more funding for tree planting, tree maintenance, all those sorts of things that cost money in a city. And then finally, another reason is climate adaptation that are particularly relevant to Belfast. Our towns and cities will get hotter, we'll have more extreme weather events, we will have more droughts and more flooding, and we will use uh, more energy within those towns and cities. And trees, um, as Alan said, can help with all of those things. So they can reduce the energy spent on heating and cooling, they can reduce surface flooding, and certainly when you plant trees in catchment areas, they can reduce really serious um, large scale flooding as well. Um, right, so Belfast, here's a map of Belfast, and we had to plan the survey so that we had sample plots that covered both the urban area, which is outlined in blue, and the rural area, which is outlined in orange. And when we plan these IT eco surveys, we want to make sure that our samples that we take within the city represent the whole area of the city. So I think we aimed for, let me get this right, 200 plots in the urban area, and these were distributed within a grid, and we put one plot randomly within each grid cell, and then 150 plots in the rural area, or it might have been 250, 100, but around that split. And the rural ones, because it's a much more um, like homogeneous area uh, of land use, we didn't have a grid to distribute those, we just let GIS decide where to randomly place those. So this is what our sampling um, strategy looks like at the beginning. Not all of these plots are available to visit. Some of them are physically inaccessible and sometimes you can't get permission, but this is our kind of, this is what we start with. So these are samples right across the city. Um, and the plots themselves, these sample plots are randomly distributed circles with a 22.7 meter diameter. Um, and when you when you go to the centre of your plot, you survey all of the shrubs and the trees that you find in there, and you take a note of the ground cover and land use data as well. And as you can see, some plots have no trees at all, <laughs> like um, three of these examples here, and some of them have lots and lots. Um, John Morris, um, our main surveyor, may have something to say about that later. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get to a plot in a woodland area. And if the trees are young, you may have 60 or 70 small trees to survey. So this way of doing random sampling across the city is really good for uh, capturing the variation right across an urban area. Um, so just before I hand over to Danny to talk about some of the results, um, here's an example of the things that were measured on the plot. So they were on both private and public land and 312 plots in total were visited. And within those 312 plots, there were 751 trees that were surveyed. So the surveyors measured and recorded 751 individual trees. And these covered urban and rural parts of Belfast. The majority of the plots were surveyed by professional surveyors, but some volunteers also got involved as well, which was really good. And they recorded the species, the stem diameter, the height of the tree, the size of the crown, which is a sort of the balloon on the string or the lollipop on the stick. So all of the dimensions of the crown and then information about the condition um, and life expectancy of the tree as well. So hopefully that's given you an idea of what's involved in planning and undertaking the measurements. And Danny is going to start to introduce some of the um, results now. So Danny, if you um, just let me know when you want the slide changing. Hannah, that was great. Um, yeah, thank you, Hannah. That was a really lovely introduction, actually, to the survey and the whole background to what we've done. Um, and, you know, for those of you who might read the report or see some of the information um, published, it'll be really good to have that, that background to understand kind of how we got there. 
Um, so as Hannah said, we surveyed all those plots within the city and um, part of what iTreeco does is it takes that information and then it extrapolates it across the whole area. So it kind of gives you a, a view of what Belfast is like as a, as a total area. So um, based on all the data, um, it estimated that there were about 808,000 trees in Belfast. Um, and when we look at that in terms of how many people live in Belfast and, and how that sort of fits together, um, it's really cool. So it's actually more than two trees per person. So for every person living in Belfast, there are more than two trees. And I think that's a really nice way of being able to just kind of visualise how many that is, because I'm you know, I would really struggle to imagine what 808,000 trees looks like. And I think that just really helps you to kind of get a real picture for, for how many that is. Um, and the estimated tree canopy cover is 14.5%. And just to give an idea, um, the average canopy cover in England is about 16%, which I think was mentioned earlier. So you're, you're very close to the kind of average for most towns and cities. However, in a fantastic place, in Belfast with the One Million Trees programme, looking to double the number of trees. So it's absolutely fantastic. And um, I'm really excited to see in a couple of years time how that kind of become a changes and, and I'm sure it will change a lot of the, you know, parks and open spaces within the city. So really exciting time. And um, hopefully that gives you a bit of a picture of how many trees we're talking about. And this really, you know, the number of trees that we've determined in this and the, the species um, really help us to, to understand the results that we see later on in the study. So thanks, Hannah. Um, so to give you a bit of an idea for the, the makeup, I suppose, of, of those, you know, 14.5% tree cover and how many thousand trees. So we found 77 different species in the urban area and 35 in the rural area, which is very typical of kind of those two types. So you tend to have much more diverse um diversity in urban areas, much more variation in species and sometimes some more unusual ones, whereas in rural areas they tend to be a lot more uniform and, and a smaller sort of palette of species. So that was really great to see, but yeah, very typical um, species mix. Ash was the most abundant species in Belfast, so about 11% of the tree population or 91,000 trees are ash. So um, it's a really I think probably for those of you that are aware of ash dieback and, and the problems that lots of tree managers are facing, it's a really, really useful piece of information to actually know how many trees you're talking about when you're looking at measures to kind of um, deal with that. So all this information will be really helpful in not only working out what to plant in future as part of the One Million Trees project, but also trees that might be at risk or, or need a little bit of special attention. The second and third most common species were sycamore and beech. Um, sycamore is a really fantastic large tree and you'll probably see its name cropping up throughout the results later on as well because it's <laughs> it's one of the best uh, in this study for uh, ecosystem service um, yeah, benefits and that kind of thing. Thank you very much. So um, this is another one which I think is a really um, interesting visual in terms of trying to look at what you've got now and also what you might want to do in the future so this is looking at the um sort of size class distribution so as hannah said as part of the survey every single tree that was measured we measured the diameter of the trunk and that helps us to sort of get a picture for um the distribution in the population of sizes so as you can see from this slide you've got um 63 percent of the population is between seven and 30 centimeters so those are fairly young or smaller trees um they're not tiny but they're, they're in that smaller size class so that will probably include a large number of trees that are being currently planted or were planted several years ago but also slightly smaller specimens as we go up um, in the size classes, you see the percentages decrease, which is very common and very normal, but it really highlights that those really large trees that are, you know, more than 90, 90 centimetres and even those in the 60 to 90 group um, with 12 or less than 1% of the population, it just really sort of helps to visualise that actually maintaining and managing the older trees and the larger specimens is really, really important to try and keep those numbers as high as you can. So particularly what you find with iTreeco studies is the, the larger trees, the really mature trees and, and the specimens or species like sycamore that have a really big canopy are the ones that provide the, 
the greatest amount of benefit. So it's a really useful way to kind of just break it down into those smaller groups and just look at actually how much of your population is in each of those groups. So I think Hannah's going to do a couple more and then we're going to swap back in a mo. <laughs> Um, I'll talk about leaf area now. So this is one of the metrics that I treat eco uh, calculates for us. So why is leaf area important? Uh, and as Stanley's just said, many benefits rely on large trees and specifically large leaf area. So benefits like rainfall interception, pollution absorption and shade provision and loads of others are delivered most by trees with large canopies and lots of leaf area. So that can either be a combination of loads and loads of tiny leaves, or it can be, you know, really, really big leaves. So that um, the tree as a whole has a huge area of leaf. And ITU Eco has calculated that the total leaf area of all of Belfast trees is nearly 12,000 hectares. And to give an idea of what that would look like on the ground, if they were spread out, they would cover the Lagan Valley Regional Park two and a half times, which is enormous. Um, I've got a little bit more detail about leaf area in this plot, which is uh, from the report. So along this bottom axis, we've got tree species. And then on this side, we have percentage leaf area. So we can see um, that Sycamore, this green bar, has the um, the highest contribution to the total leaf area of all of the species in Belfast. And that's why it delivers so many um, of the benefits. Uh, next is beech. Um, so again, they're big trees with lots and lots of leaves. So they deliver, they're gonna deliver a lot of the benefits as well. Um, and here is ash, these two columns represent ash. So these yellow columns, uh, which refers to the right-hand axis is the percentage of the total population. So you can see that although ash is the most common tree, it doesn't have the highest leaf area. And that's a combination of them not having particularly dense canopies, they're not like really big leaves like sycamore are. You stand under an ash tree, more light will be coming through than if you're under a sycamore tree. But it's also down to the fact that a lot of the ash trees that were surveyed were found to be in poor condition and have quite a bit of their canopy missing, probably due to ash dieback. We didn't survey specifically for that, but it's a reasonable bet that a lot of them will be affected by it. So that's an interesting result. Um, one of the benefits that lots of leaves provide is um, air pollution absorption. So I'll talk about the impacts of air pollution so that we know why it's important um, that trees can help remove pollutants from the air. So in this left hand box are the pollutants that we've concentrated on in the report. And these are nitrogen dioxide, ozone, um, particulate matter smaller than 2.5 microns, which is called PM2.5, and finally sulfur dioxide. And um, these pollutants uh, can result in damage to lung, heart and brain health. So um, higher concentrations result in more hospital admissions for cardiovascular uh, disease and things like that. They also damage buildings and ozone in particular um, can cause damage to plants as well as to our lungs. And altogether, they re uh, result in reduced productivity from a workforce because people are unwell or they're not, um, you know, they're not at their best. Um, and the uh, UK government has a way of valuing the impact um, of removing these air pollutants called the air quality appraisal. Um, I can pass this link on to anyone who's interested, but these uh, the values in this link are how we've um, put a monetary value on the uh, air pollution benefits that the trees provide. So uh, the trees in Belfast remove 211 tonnes of air pollution every year, which is equal to the weight of one blue whale, <laughs> which is absolutely amazing. I love that it's, it's just the same weight as a blue whale. Um, and this service is worth nearly 7.5 million pounds every year. So the trees are providing this year after year. And again, sycamore trees absorb the most pollution um, of all of the species in Belfast's urban forest because there are lots of them and they have um, a large leaf area. So 
just to carry on from Hannah's results there, so this one's not quite as exciting as the blue whale um, <laughs> in comparison. I think that was the best one I've ever, ever done in an eye tree study. I, I was looking up and it, I think it, yeah, blue whales estimated it around 200. And I was like, this is perfect. It's such a nice way to visualize it. But um, in terms of the other ones, so there's two different measures that we look at for carbon. So there's sequestration and storage. So sequestration is an annual value. So this repeats every single year, whereas storage is the total value. So that's what's been accumulated over the whole of the time, essentially. So um, as part of the study, um, ITRICO estimated that the trees in Belfast take up um, nearly 9,000 tonnes of carbon each year. And if we look at um, how much carbon is um, sort of emitted through driving a car, that's about the same as just under 5,000 people driving a car each year. So um, it's fantastic. And it's just so lovely to think that actually the trees that are there, you know, on the streets that you walk past, on, you know, lining the roads, they're just constantly removing this carbon on a continual basis every single year. Um, and it's, you know, a fantastic resource. So that, that service is worth over eight million pounds per year. So the way we calculate this is very similar to the air pollution removal, as Hannah said, the UK government, there's a, there's a cost per tonne for carbon um, that's emitted. And that's essentially, if we know how much the, the trees remove, we're able to sort of cross match that with the um, with the value to say how much that service is worth. So um, that's a really fantastic and very valuable piece of information again for Belfast City Council in terms of levering more funding and actually justifying what a fantastic job their trees are doing all the time. Um, and again, you won't be surprised to see that Sycamore sequestered the most carbon <laughs> and for the same reason as before it's just such a fantastic tree it's huge it's got a really you know leafy foliage um and so there's a lot more a lot more action that can happen um next slide please so this is the carbon storage which is the second part of the carbon um results so this is again the amount um that is a total amount so this isn't an annual value and um the reason why it's so important is um the carbon in the trees would be released if the trees died and decomposed or burned and as we said about earlier when we were talking about the size class distribution maintaining those really large healthy trees keeps that carbon stored for as long as possible and over time obviously you can imagine if they're constantly accumulating carbon every single year and building it up by the time they reach those large sizes actually those trees are storing such humongous amounts of carbon um, and it's quite quite amazing when you look at the results so currently in in Belfast the total carbon storage is 319,000 and that service is worth 290 million pounds which is just unbelievable amounts to even consider um, and the sycamore trees alone so stand out again store at just under 50,000 tons of carbon worth just over 40 million pounds so just those sycamore trees so every time you walk past one now you can think Cool, that's a really <laughs> valuable tree. Okay, so the last slide then for my section piece, Hannah. Um, so this is um, avoided runoff. So we mentioned it earlier. Um, we talk about it in terms of its ability to prevent flooding. And that's because essentially um, the, the trees, when it, when it rains, the trees um, intercept the rainfall and some of that water stays within the tree canopy. And when the rain stops and the sun comes out, that water is evaporated. So all the water that is held within the canopy um, never enters our sort of combined sewage system. And if you imagine, you know, if rain fell down on a tree, quite a lot of that will stay in the canopy. If that tree wasn't there, all of that water would hit the tarmac roads and pavements and run straight down into our drainage system. So they help to reduce the amount of surface water that we have in cities and urban areas but you know that's a fantastic service and we can work out the amount which is 317,000 meters cube which again I would have no idea what that actually looks like if I was trying to visualize it so to put that into a context that's about the volume of 127 Olympic swimming pools so just try and imagine one olympic size swimming pool volume which to me feels massive and times that by 127 so it's a huge amount of water that's just being held within those canopies and again it's it's a nice easy one to explain how we work out the value for this because um essentially water that that runs down our tarmac roads um and in cities goes through the 
combined sewage system and is treated by water treatment companies. So if we know how much it costs to treat one meters cubed of water, we're able to work out what that cost is. And the service is worth 593,000 pounds per year. So another massive service those trees are providing on, a, on an annual basis. And this is another one of those results that, that continues every single year and kind of refreshes. So yeah, thank you very much. I'll hand back to Hannah for the last bit. Thanks, Danny. Um, so that was a whistle stop tour of some of the ecosystem services that Belfast's trees provide. But it's worth um, highlighting that iTree doesn't calculate all the benefits that trees provide. So other benefits include moderating air temperature by shading and by um, evapotranspiration. They reduce noise pollution if they're planted um, in the right place. In a, in a kind of uh, shelter belt style. They improve health and well-being and they create um, a sense of place and give people places to meet and nice places to go and do exercise. And um, currently there are loads and loads of benefits that can't be quantified. So we can't measure them, we can't put a number on them. So it's worth um, being aware that the report is a, is a kind of small section of all of the benefits that, that trees provide. Um, on top of that, there are other ways of valuing trees, and this is a, an additional valuation that we've undertaken for the report. And we've used a tool called CAVAT, which stands for Capital Asset Valuation of Amenity Trees. And CAVAT is designed for um, trees on streets and in amenity areas. Um, and it's a way of valuing the visual and other amenity that trees um, bring to our area. So it might be trees in parks, trees around houses, trees in streets, just the way that they make a place um, pleasant to live. And CAVAT um, is a calculation that takes into account population density. So a tree in a more densely populated area has more value because more people are seeing it. It takes into account the crown size, um, it accounts for the condition of the crown. So if that tree is in a poor condition, it's worth slightly less in terms of um, providing immunity. And it takes into account life expectancy. So a tree with short life expectancy has lower value under this system than one with long life expectancy. And this is an amended quick version of the full CAVAT method, which you can look up um, online if you're interested. So those are the things that we take into account. And these are some CAVAT results. Uh, we only undertook this valuation for urban trees because that's what the CAVAT system is appropriate for. So we didn't include the rural area. And the total CAVAT value of trees in Belfast is around 4.6 billion. So <laughs> um, this looks like it kind of overshadows the ecosystem services that iTree calculates, but it's important to consider both. Um, so, it's good to sort of step away from a pure monetary value when you're comparing these because all of the benefits that trees provide are important. And Richard did a really good job of illustrating that in when his one million trees update. It's, it's not all about carbon. It's not only about flooding. It's about everything that trees can do for us. Um, and the most valuable tree in terms of cava in the whole survey was found in woodland in the grounds of Queen's University. Um, so this image on the right is a is a screenshot from what three words and that little square there shows where the center of the plot was. So this very valuable tree is, is somewhere in this <laughs> area. Um, it was a beech and it had a stem diameter of over 100 centimeters, um, which is fairly big. And that came out as 158,000 pounds, which is amazing. So somewhere in the grounds, there's this lovely beach. Um, we have to consider pests and diseases when we're thinking about the future um, and the, the current state of an urban forest. And part of our um, job in delivering this iTree Eco project is to consider all pests and diseases that could have an impact on the trees in Belfast. And those are uh, written about in detail in the full report. I've just chosen two here to talk about. Um, trees are susceptible to pests and diseases, urban trees in particular, susceptible because they have quite difficult growing conditions and um, the harder a time a tree has getting established and thriving, the more 
vulnerable it is to pests and diseases. On top of that, um, pests and disease impacts are expected to get <clears throat> worse with climate change. So as our climate changes and our seasons shift, it's likely that um, more pests will be able to thrive in slightly different climates that we're going to experience and that the timing of their emergence compared with the timing of plant growth is going to have impacts as well. Um, so the two pests I've highlighted here are ash sawfly and cholera diabaca of ash. And unfortunately, it's a bit of a double whammy for Belfast's many, many ash trees. So ash sawfly occurs all over um, the UK, but it seems to be particularly prevalent in Belfast and has been known to completely defoliate ash trees. So this is the adult here at the top, and these are the caterpillars, the larvae, munching on a delicious ash leaf. So the trees do recover, they will grow new leaves, but the long-term impact of this happening year on year is unknown. So it's worth keeping an eye on that. Um, and that comes on top of um, ash dieback, which is also present in Belfast and throughout Northern Ireland. And unfortunately it threatens the most common tree in Belfast's urban forests. So this is a bit of a sad story that came out of the report, but it does enable um, the council to plan to ultimately have to plant to replace the ash trees that are going to be lost through this uh, unfortunate combination. So that brings us on to recommendations and this is just the selection of the many recommendations that we've made in the report. So we would recommend planting a wide variety of species, as many different species as are appropriate for um, this general rule of the right tree in the right place. Um, we would say protect the existing mature and maturing trees that you've got to ensure that they continue to deliver their amazing benefits for as long as possible. Um, engage communities in the care of newly planted trees, which it sounds like you definitely have done, <laughs> uh, which is amazing to know that this all started from community action. Um, plan to replace ash trees, which will eventually be lost from the urban forest. If you can and where you can, plant large stature, long-lived trees where possible because they deliver the most benefits. Um, consider all of the benefits that a tree can provide and aim to plant them where they're most needed by people. In the city, aim for 25% canopy cover, which would be fantastic to go from 14.5 to 25. I think that's a really nice target. And, um, Tree economics working with Belfast City Council will um, deliver ways or, or detailed ways of achieving that in the, in the tree strategy. And then finally, um, to establish a tree health monitoring programme within the city, either uh, you know, within the council or even better as a community and citizen science project to, to spot early warning signs of new or worsening pests and diseases. So that's a a small selection of the recommendations um, that we've made. So here are some thank yous. Um, we'd like to thank the iTree Cooperative Partnership for making this tool available and for giving us support um, whenever it's needed. Um, the Belfast One Million Trees programme under which this iTree project was funded and initiated. Uh, John Morris and his team of surveyors, who I think John is on the line, is gonna say a few words in a moment. Uh, volunteers who also did some surveying, which is fantastic to get people involved. All of the landowners and house owners, and residents, and members of the public who allowed John and the volunteers onto their land to measure the trees, because without that permission, it would be completely impossible. And um, thank you all for listening. We'd be uh, pleased to take any questions that you've got. Before we bring in John at this stage. <laughs> Say a few words, John. Do you want to come in? Um, thanks, thanks very much, um, Richard. Um, thanks, Hannah and Danny. It was like an amazing presentation. It was fascinating to like hear all the results and all the like visual graphics and that. Um, so my, my name is John Morris. Um, I run a, a, a small independent um arboricultural consultancy. We're based in North Down, and um my colleagues and I worked alongside the team of surveyors to do the uh, field work for the Belfast iTree Eco Project. Um, I'm just going to give a, a really br brief summary um, of sort of how we collected the data 
and our experiences doing this. Um, but I, before I start, I just want to thank Belfast City Council, Tree Economics and Forest Research for the opportunity to be involved in this amazing project. Um, and hopefully all the information will help to work towards the, the Belfast One Million Trees um, objectives. Um, the, the field work that we did took place, um, uh, like, like Hannah said, at 300 locations or plots across the city. Um, the plots included public parks and open spaces like um, Storm of the State, uh, Beaver Forest Park, Ormo Park and Lagan Meadows. Uh, we also visited nature reserves at Cave Hill, uh, Davis and Black Mountain and the RSPB window on wildlife at Harbour Meadows on Belfast Lock and loads of schools, colleges, golf clubs, industrial areas and residential areas all across the city, including in Belfast city centre itself. Um, so each of the 300 plots, um, like Hannah had said, is a radius circle, 11.3 um, metre radius. Um, so from the centre of the circle in all directions, that would, it's sort of roughly equivalent uh, to like in length, um, ha half the length of a tennis court, or about six people laying head to toe, just to give you an idea of the size of each plot. And in big open spaces like public parks, this is really easy to measure. But in other locations, like in people's back gardens, where the, the plot was maybe spread across three or four properties, uh, this was a bit more difficult, both in terms of measuring the plot and even just gaining access to all the properties in a single visit. The data that we collected um, included the, the type of land use, so everything from residential to agricultural, uh, transport and wetlands. Um, the information that we collected was on uh, ground cover. Um, so depending on location, we had things like, you know, tarmac, cement, mulch, grass, and so on. Then we collected information on the shrubs and um, everything from species to height, volume, and the percentage of each shrub across the plot. And then finally, uh, information on the trees. Um, and again, like Hannah has said, we collected all the usual information, including species, height, stem diameter, health and condition, and the estimated uh, useful life expectancy, and also measurements like uh, crown height and canopy spread, so that the canopy volume could be calculated. Uh, we recorded where the tree was growing, uh, for example, if it was on grass or from a pavement and how much of the canopy was directly above a permeable or an impermeable surface, and how much shade the canopy provided. And this all fed back into uh, Hannah and Danny's work on calculating the different benefits provided, uh, such as how much carbon was being sequestered and um, how useful the trees were at intercepting rainfall to help reduce surface water runoff to mitigate against things like flooding. Uh, during the field work, we found there was a huge amount of public interest in the project. Um, like normally when I'm talking about trees, um, like on a day out with a family or at home, which, which happens quite regularly, nobody in my family really wants to know, even the dog gets fed up. But the people that we met during the survey were just totally fascinated by the iTree project and also the Belfast One Million Trees project. Uh, they wanted to know how the information would be used, how they could get involved. Um, we were just really blown away by how much interest there was, particularly from uh, schools and like local residents. Um, and a lot of people asked, you know, when we'd be coming back, if, the, if when the trees will be planted. Um, and for us, um, this was great just getting to talk to people um, and a really good opportunity to spread the word about the Belfast One Million Trees project. Um, and just to finish, I just want to say, I think at the minute, it's a really exciting time uh, to be involved in our boriculture and urban forestry in Belfast. It's great to see all of the One Million Tree events starting to take place across the city, like the Give a Tree a Home free giveaway. Um, and going forward, we're really looking forward to seeing how the iTree data um, is used to help achieve the objectives of the Belfast One Million Trees project, and also what the future holds for the for the forest of Belfast. Thanks very much. 
Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much, John. Um, there are there are a few questions in the chat there, so I picked I picked out maybe two or three, um, and I'll maybe turn to colleagues to answer some of these if that's all right. There was, I think the first one of the first questions was it was around ornamental trees and whether they because I had mentioned like the, our principle is to plant native trees, <clears throat> so ornamentals wouldn't be considered native trees. Um, but having said that, we do plant ornamentals in the city from time to time. And I don't know, I don't know, Alan, if you want to say anything about that, the use of ornamentals. Yeah, sure, Richard. Um, we, we do plant ornamental trees within the city centre. Um, we, we do a lot of work with street tree planting. Um, and obviously ornamental trees are um, better placed for the likes of street trees. Obviously, the, the, the difficulty we have is uh, damage to underground utilities and so on. So the road authorities are very, uh, you know, clear on what sort of trees they would like to be planted. They don't give them bother. Uh, so we do that. We also I think it's important to remember is that we, way back in the old Victorian times, there was a lot of ornamental trees planted at the end. Co they're coming close to the end of their lifespan. It's important to put back what was there. So if we lose big cedars or, you know, redwoods or, you know, trees like that, we, it's important to put those back in. Um, and I think uh, that's well. That's why we do that, so we keep that continuity. But in saying that, where we do plant a lot of young trees, with planting, it is uh, all native trees, and it's important to do that. But if you bear in mind when we when we're looking at ornamental trees and native trees, it's important to remember with pests and diseases, we have to be very you know open about that because you know obviously with all the ash and all the problems there we're having with ash dieback, it is important to get a balance. But certainly with the young trees, it's uh, native trees we plant, but we do, do we definitely do plant ornamentals for that reason, that we want to keep the continuity there. And also we have to be mindful of the likes of roadside planting and the damage it could cause to underground utilities. Okay, thank you, Alan. Uh, there was a question about um, <coughs> urban hedges and whether they would be considered hedgerows or not. I think it related to the I tree methodology. So I don't know whether Danny and Hannah, if you want to say anything about that, about urban hedges. Yeah, so um, I suppose the easiest way to kind of describe it in terms of the data collection, we include both trees and shrubs in the sort of raw data that we collect. So hedgerows would be part of that if they are of a certain size. So there are certain categories in which they fall into. So we essentially say, if the diameter is more than seven centimetres, it's considered a tree um, and shrubs are sort of a height limit. So anything below that is, is not counted as a shrub. And the reason why we have those categories is essentially to try and make sure that um, they're considered in terms of the amount of ecosystem services they would provide. So if they're much larger, then the delivery is much more like that of a tree. If they're smaller, then it's much more like a shrub. And if they're really, really teeny tiny ones, then they're kind of too small to be included as part of the survey. And it would probably take John's team about three years if we included everything. So <laughs> there are some limits that we work within and all of that's within the iTree report. So if you're interested in finding out a bit more about how that works, then feel free to take a look at the report or have a look at the iTree website or either Hannah or I's website. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add on that, Hannah, or no. Cool. <laughs> Hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, there was a question about coppicing and, and whether iTree uh, captures the benefits of coppicing or whether that's something we could consider for future in the future in terms of community involvement. So again, I don't know, Danny or Hannah, if you want to talk to that, but it's definitely something we can give a bit of thought to in the, in the tree strategy, which is coming uh, down the line. Yeah, I think it's a, a really good question. Um, so I've sort of got a two part answer to that one. Um, if a tree uh, is already coppiced and has grown up as a multi-stemmed tree and those individual stems are big enough, then it will definitely be included um, in data collection as a tree. And iTree has a way of, um, you record up to six of the largest stems in a multi-stem tree and then the model um, assimilates those into an effective single stem so that it can calculate the biomass. So they are included in that sense. But all of the additional um, benefits from coppicing that you've mentioned are not included. And I think that would be something really interesting to look at. It would be such a nice addition to benefits that we already know about. Thank you. 
Um, <clears throat> Peter Deal, who was with me, has had to leave, unfortunately, but he did, have, he did have a question or a bit of a suggestion, I suppose, about the continuity of the, the iTree um, eco process and that being updated from time to time. I wondered if, you, if Hannah and Danny, if you had thoughts about how, how often uh, a report like this should be updated or has been updated in, in other locations. Yeah, sure. And um, that's a really nice question. And it's very well timed, actually, because um, the very, very, very first UK IG project was done in Torbay in 2010. And that was kind of the pilot to make sure it's obviously with it being a US based program, the um, Torbay project was used to kind of verify that actually the, the adaptations to the UK made it a meaningful exercise. Um, and the revisit has just happened this year. So that's about 10 years after. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into these iTreeco studies and trees obviously take a bit of time to change. So all this new planting, um, you know, if you surveyed it last year, you'd probably have a small increase, but it's probably not going to be that useful. So I think we tend to usually say between five and 10 years, depending on what's going on in the city and what's going on around and kind of what you're hoping to get from the project. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in having a look at the revisit, the Torbay Eco report will be coming out soon. But, um, that's the first one, which is really exciting. <laughs> um, we've shared, there was a question about the report, the A3 Eco reports. So we've shared that link, a link to that. Um, and I should say Perla, who, who asked that question, was, was one of the, a piece of research that she did earlier had actually triggered the, uh, the start of the A3 Eco process. So I have to say thanks to Perla, who's on the call as well. Um, does anybody else have any questions you want to put to any of the speakers um, now, whether it's about the i Eco report or about the wider Million Trees project? Um, we've got a few minutes left if you want to, if you want to raise your hand or just come in and, and ask a question. Anybody? If not. I might start to wrap up if that's okay. But I mean, do feel free to stick your hand up if you, if you do, if something comes into your head. Um, this is obviously the first the first time we've updated um, on the Million Trees project, and we had something really exciting to launch and, and talk to people about. Um, so I wanted to say thanks to the Urban Tree Festival for the opportunity to, to be here today, um, and thanks to all of you for coming as well. Because I know there are there are lots of people involved in tree planting initiatives across the UK and across the world, and we've we've learned a lot from from those initiatives um, from Manchester to Milan to Melbourne and all, all over the world really and um, speaking to, to colleagues who are going through similar similar challenges and also um, helping us to sort of think about how we do things in Belfast um, so just wanted to say thanks to anybody who's on the call who's involved in any of those initiatives um, as I said there's going to be more announcements coming up and as, as, as we're moving forward in the project we'll step up um, these kind of public engagements and, and, and initiatives um, so uh, I think that's really all I wanted to say in terms of where we're at in, in the project. I don't know what, Alan, if you want to say anything maybe about the, the tree strategy process and how that will move forward. Maybe yeah, interest the people. Yeah, just we're, we're, we're going to start our consultations uh, with various external stakeholders uh, on the 24th of May, one of three sort of workshops. Uh, and we're going to, you know, uh, see what we can get back from uh, all the various consultees. But, you know, what, what basically, uh, I think, John Morris was saying, and, and it's true to fact that you know people are interested in trees. Certainly, we found out in Belfast, everybody's interested in trees, which is great because it helps us, you know, along the way to do our job well. So to have everybody involved and everybody participating, it's going to be great. And we're really, really looking forward to having uh, the strategy in place, and then it'll help us deliver, you know, with the vision. It'll help us to maintain the trees we have. It'll help us to hopefully double our canopy cover within the city through the One Million Trees program. So it's exciting times. And if I could put one wee plug in too, Richard, if you don't mind, uh, we're advertising for two woodland officers. Uh, it's going to go out maybe at the end of this week. So if anybody's interested in living or working in Northern Ireland, Belfast, you know, uh, keep, a, keep an eye out uh, on, the, public, uh, on the, uh, the newspapers because it's going to go out soon because we're trying to expand our team too. Uh, what, what Danny had said too was, you know, we need to also uh, look at what we have. We need to be inspecting what we have. So this is why we're building our team to try and, you know, get out around our trees an awful lot quicker. Um, so it's exciting times. Yeah, come and, come and live in Belfast and come and work in Belfast City Council. So <laughs> that's a good one, Alan, thank you. Um, there was a question there about tips for others without a tree planting initiative in their towns and cities. And... <clears throat> 
I suppose I feel like we're quite early. We're still quite early in our, our initiative in Belfast. And as I said, like we're, we're part of a huge lineage. So it's not that we didn't have any, it's not that tree planting wasn't happening in the city already. Um, we've really, we've used this million trees to sort of like package tree planting and uh, try to, to galvanize communities and residents across, across the city and businesses and, and all sorts of people. Um, but I would, I would definitely say I spend a bit of time at the start. We spent, I'm sure we spent it, we got to the year um, putting the structures in place and talking to all the organizations and the partners and taking advice from, from the experts, you know, Woodland Trust and Belfast Hills Partnership um, and our own guys in Belfast City Council who are tree experts. So I think the more, the more you can um, invest that time at the start of the project, the more uh, chance of success you'll have. And, and I think it's not the iTree Eco Report um, and the Belfast tree, tree Strategy are going to be two of the, the critical pieces of work for us going forward. So we're building those, building all of those foundations. The Emergency Tree Fund from the Woodland Trust has been a really wonderful um, investment in the initiative, and it's allowed us to accelerate everything that we were doing, um, from from looking at com community uh, volunteering uh, to the development of tree nurseries to um, tree planting and tree uh, management uh, across the board. It's really been a, it's been a shot in the arm, you know, for Belfast City Belfast Million Trees Project. Um, I don't know. Uh, if anybody else, like Gregor, Alan, Lisa, if you've any any thoughts about that, you know, is there anything that you would say to other towns or cities that are hoping to develop these kind of initiatives? Gregor, you'll have worked for some of our colleagues in, in neighboring councils in Northern Ireland we're, we're, we're talking to, and I know Gregor's working with them. So, Gregor, do you want to say anything about that at all? Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think everybody tried to get this message across through their presentations. The partnership work and is the, the key to it all, to the success of it all, and the, the planning. As you said, Richard, it was a year, at least a year in the initial stages. Um, I know we were doing stuff in the background individually, but before the partnership all came together, it was a good, it was a good year. Um, yeah, and if anybody's interested in the emergency tree fund, we don't know if it will be back again this coming year for other councils to apply, but um, uh, you know, do keep in touch with us and we'll let you know if that is an opportunity going forward. Um, for supporting other councils to, tr to try it. So it's basically an, an enabling fund to try and get councils to, to move forward with uh, tree, tree initiatives that they have within their area. Thanks, Gregor. There was a question that came up there about the impact of uh, tree planting on the budget for maintenance. Um, so we do, I think I mentioned, like the part of the emergency tree fund, it's, it's partly about tree planting, but it's also looking at um, how we manage and maintain um, trees. But it is a big, it's a big challenge even for Belfast City Council and maintaining our own tree stock. Um, but but any, any new tree planting that we're involved in, I mean, the maintenance is, is considered as part of the process and we won't plant without uh, a plan being in place to, to, to address that. I don't know, Alan, if you want to say anything about maintenance, because it is a big issue, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, maintenance is, it's, it's important, you know, it's, it's important to plant trees, but it's equally more important to, to maintain those trees, to, the, the need to survive, we want to, you know, have these, you know, larger canopy covered cities. So uh, for us in Belfast City Council, you're right, for every uh, time we plant trees, we do build in a uh, maintenance budget for that. Uh, and equally with our partners, you know, like the Housing Association, being the Northern Ireland Housing Executive, the Road Service, who we do a lot of planting, they all have certain budgets for that. And they're happy to contribute more budget to that um, incrementally year on year. Um, and I think that's important for, for all of us to ensure that we do maintain that. And again, with so much public support um, for tree planting, uh, maintenance, is going, maintenance money should be a little bit easier to get if we're going to keep these trees uh, for the, you know, the next generation to come. Brilliant. Thanks, Alan. Listen, um, we've, reached, we've reached 12 o'clock, so I'm actually going to you know, one more question coming in. Um, are you creating any systematic photographic archive that would allow long-term ground level, eye level records to compare against? Um, that's something we, I don't think we have a, a system in place for, for, we are taking, recording some of the tree planting that goes on, but we're not compiling a, an archive of for, for each tree that's put in, if that's what you're asking, Nora. Um, but it's definitely something as we're developing this tree strategy, I think there's an opportunity to sort of look at some of these issues. About how we record and how we monitor, even in, even in terms of you know how we use uh, digital mapping and so on, the GPS. I know that's something that Alan's done a bit of work on for Belfast street trees, um, but for us in Belfast million trees, we want to get better at how we uh, map the trees across the city. 
where the impact is in areas currently lacking trees. Well, yeah, canopy cover, it's something that we, that Danny mentioned. Yeah, so some cities, like I mentioned Melbourne, they, their targets are based around increasing canopy cover in areas which are low in canopy cover. So that is something that we can, we, we will look to use um, going forward. And we're also gonna try and map against the deprivation in the city um, and other uh, factors. So we can put tree, where trees have the, the biggest impact on um, health and wellbeing, for example. And so we'll try and uh, link some of those things and, and look at that. But I think that's, that's something for the future in the world. But thank you for that question. I'm going to actually wrap up now because we've, we've hit 12 o'clock. So thank you very much for all the questions and thank you very much for everybody coming in today, uh, all the speakers. And uh, as I say, like it's, we're, I feel like it's, there's a real community of people involved in tree planting uh, across uh, Northern Ireland and UK and across the world. So I mean, we, we really want to stay in touch with, with all you guys and you know, come back to us and stay in touch if you can. And thank you again for coming today. So um, I'll wrap up there. Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody.